Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Build Your Copywriting Business Podcast. Hey, Kate. Hello, hello. 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 Okay, guys. Today, we are going to talk about another means of potentially getting work, another tool to put in your your toolkit, your toolbox. Um, But we have some caveats with that. It can be a really great uh, a really great method. It can definitely come in handy, um, but it's not the number one thing you want to rely on. So, what we are talking anything, about, right? Yeah, well, you always want yeah. control. You exactly. want to rely on yourself. Yeah. The number one thing is always going to be pitching. Mm-hmm. I know that maybe you're like, oh, it's got to be something else. It's going to be easier and faster. And nope, it's going to be pitching. And the more you pitch, the easier it will get. And yada yada yada. You and know, it will get drill. faster. Yeah. And it will get faster. And you'll have to do less of it. And yeah. you know the drill. But today, we're going to talk about something else that you should add to your toolkit, but not rely on solely. And that is working with recruiters. So, Kate, what is a recruiter? They are folks that help companies fill positions that those companies have. And so they go out and they find talent that might work best for the company, and they fill, fill those those gaps. That's a very basic, I feel like. Definition. No, it's a great, that's a, that's a great definition. And, um, it's, they do fill positions for full-time work, but they also mm-hmm. do fill positions for contract work, uh, for part-time work, for, um, freelance work, freelance work as well. Um, so I think it's pretty clear as to why they could be fantastic. Most people's experiences with recruiters, or at least it could be that some people's initial experiences with recruiters are they're sitting there and then in the middle of the day, they get an email from a stranger who's like, hey, there, I have a position that I'm looking to fill. Are you interested? I'd like to get on a call, uh, which is, it, I was going to say can be, but it is. It's very exciting when they say, oh, I'm a recruiter. I'm working for this company. Mm-hmm. Are you interested? Super duper exciting. Um, and I think too, then that leads a lot of people to be like, well, yes, I'm only going to work with recruiters. Me. Yeah. Cause they're going to bring work to me. This is fantastic. I just sit back and these recruiters bring me work and set me, set me up for positions. Um, and that can be what it feels like for you as the copywriter. Um, but the thing that you never want to forget is that the recruiter works for the company. They're, they've been hired for the company. The company is going to pay them when the position is filled. If it's a, a full-time position, usually they'll pay, um, the company will pay the recruiter a lump sum. Um, or a percentage of the the total salary. Uh, If it's a contract position, often the recruiter will make a certain amount per hour on top of what they pay out to the contractor. But fundamentally, the recruiter does not work for you. The recruiter works for the company. So you, if you start working with recruiters, and I would recommend that you do, but if a recruiter is interested in putting you up for a position at a company, again, whether that's full-time, freelance, contract, whatever, they will be hot and heavy about getting your information so they can get it in front of the company. They will be so persuasive. They will be so energetic. They will push, 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 push to try to get you to send in your information and say, yes, okay, put me up for this job. They are going to be, um, I was going to say rabid dogs, but that's not First of all, it's not very complimentary. I don't mean, um, but it's it's not quite the right energy. But they are just they're going to be in hot pursuit of you, which is great and can feel fantastic. Until How, it doesn't. Until it doesn't. <laughs> However, if the company who gets your information, if the company who gets your information is like, yes, I want to meet with this person, then they will continue being in hot pursuit and be like, oh, let's get you in for this interview, da, 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 da. Because remember, they want to fill that position and they want to make the company happy and they want to fill it quickly because the sooner they can fill that position, the sooner they get paid. And they want it to be someone that the company loves because they want the, the people to, they want the company to hire this person mm-hmm. or you potentially. But if the company is like, oh, no, I don't, I don't think they're, they're, they're quite right, don't be surprised if the recruiter falls off the face of the earth. And why is I know a lot of people will go, well, this recruiter was pursuing me like crazy and they really wanted to send me up for this job. And then all of a sudden I just stopped hearing from them. They disappeared. 
Um, and I wish I could say differently, but I think that is the experience that most of us have with recruiters. Mm -hmm. And the, the simple reason is that, again, the recruiter's working for the company. They're not working for you. So as soon as they find out that you are not the person that the company wants to move forward with, they're going to move on to other copywriters, other people that could fill that position. Um, so first of all, don't take that personally, but it's, it's really important to remember throughout this whole process that the recruiter does not work for you. The recruiter's mm -hmm. priority is filling the role with the company, making the company happy and making that happen as soon as possible. So I think that's something that can be very confusing for people and, and, and when they, they like, Oh, this recruiter really wants me. They do. They want you as long as the company wants you. If the company doesn't want you like, yeah, okay, they'll, they'll get back to you eventually. And maybe they'll put you up for another role. But in that moment, the recruiter is laser focused on filling the role for that company. They're not laser focused on you. And I can tell you it's happened. I think with pretty much every recruiter I've ever worked with, if a company, if I'm not who the company wanted to move forward with, um, then, you know, what, whether I've interviewed once or, or whatever, um, then they, they disappear. Mm -hmm. Um, and do not take it personally. I've known copywriters who are like, what did I do wrong? What was wrong with me? Da, 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 and why did this, and then, or make it, they get angry. Like who's this recruiter think they are? They not even returning my calls. Just don't make it mean anything. Don't make it well, mean anything. Even before it ha like that comes to that point, when you start, if a recruiter is interested in you, definitely get excited about the opportunity, but also keep doing all of the other things you know you need to do, like pitching, mm -hmm. uh, as we mentioned, and then that'll help you. Okay, if it doesn't work out, then you've, you're you still going on all of the other things that you need to do, and you're not just taking 100% of your time to be invested in, in this potential opportunity. You want to take you know, if you're in an interview, yes, be 100% there if that opportunity comes. But then when you leave it, okay, I'm going to go back to still sending pitches or looking at other opportunities and then go from there versus, you know, being all in all of your attention when you don't know if it's going to move forward or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't put all of your eggs in, in mm -hmm. the recruiter basket. Um, but so how can you work well with recruiters? Well, first of all, get listed with all of the mm -hmm. recruiters in your town, all of them, or if you're not in a big city or not in, in you know, whatever the, the nearest city to you is. Um, and actually a lot of them are in multiple cities so they can share and, and all that kind of yeah. stuff. A couple the, of the big ones I feel like are creative circle, the creative group mm -hmm. and 24 seven, I believe is another one that deals with creatives. And I'm sure there are a few other big ones, but those I know all have, you know, Boston, Seattle, New York, mm -hmm. wherever. Boston's all over. And mm -hmm. maybe there's smaller ones that are just local to your city or your state mm -hmm. or whatever. There are also all kinds of freelance recruiters. I still get, yeah. I mean, I have no interest in taking a, a full-time position, but I still get emails just I don't like to see what else, what's out there. Um, but I still get emails from freelance recruiters that I've worked with over the past, you know, 20 years. And you want to get listed with all of them. If any of the recruiters say to you, oh, you can only, you, if you're, if you want to work with us, you can only, um, you can only work with us run the other way. It is very well accepted within the industry that you can be listed with a bunch of different recruiters and you want to be listed with a bunch of different recruiters because there's some companies, like some bigger companies will sign a contract with, you know, say XYZ recruiting firm so that they only work with XYZ recruiting firm. Okay, well, if you're only working with a different recruiting firm, then you're never going to get the opportunities from that company. So you want to get yourself listed and on the roster at as many different recruitment, recruitment agencies as possible. But that does not mean that you should leave it up to them. You should shoot an email to your contacts at the recruitment firm once a month. You know, maybe you do it the first of every month or whatever, the fifth, pick a date, doesn't matter. But send an email to, don't do mass email, but send an email to each of your recruiters and say, hey, I just wanted to check in and see if there's anything available. You know, just as a reminder, I'm the copywriter with experience in, in this and this and this, and I'm looking for this and this and this. And the reason you want to do this is because recruitment agencies are chaotic. There's so many people in there trying to fill so many positions, um, especially the bigger it gets, the more chaotic it gets. I have gotten calls from 
two separate recruiters at the same company trying to fill the same role that weren't aware that they were both getting in touch with me. Chaotic. So you want to be the person to actively reach out and remind them that you exist. And because they, they, I'm not saying they will forget that you exist, but <laughs> they will. <laughs> they might. Yeah, there's, there's a chance they might. It's, Depending I, on the these poor people that work in recruitment agencies, chaotic. So just take it, take it, uh, take it in in your own reins. Take the reins. Um, they are your reins. Now take them. Um, and just email your recruiters once a month. Um, and follow them on uh, follow them on LinkedIn. Absolutely connect with them on LinkedIn because they'll post positions they're looking for in LinkedIn. But then also follow them on on social media because as Twitter especially, um, but anything because they will also post. Uh, I'm sure Instagram and Facebook and and all that kind of stuff as well. But um, Follow them because they will post positions. And if they forgot that you exist, but they have a position you'd be great for, you'll still see it because you followed them. And the um, positions move fast. So if you if there's something in particular you might want, you know, keep an eye out. And then if you see things that you don't want, cool. It's an easy like, nope, none of this today. I'm not going to follow up on any of these these potential opportunities. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, take a look at their websites too. They will sometimes have listings. They won't give you all the details because they don't want you to get the information and then go apply at the company themselves yourself. Um, but they might, some of the bigger ones, especially will say, Oh, you know, looking for a part-time copywriter at a tech agency responsibilities include if, if you're interested, email us here. So take a look at their, look at their websites too, and see what their, what the websites as a whole are posting. Because it could be that your contact at this recruitment firm doesn't have doesn't have that account, but somebody else does, and they're not sharing information. Because mm -hmm. again, chaotic. Um, which actually brings me to uh, a key point. Here's the thing, though: if you are out there in the world and you are um, applying directly to companies, which great, do that too. Don't apply through their website. Look for the- No easy buttons. No, no easy apply. one click applies. Never, ever, ever. Not through their websites either. Find the hiring manager, email them directly. Um, but you, if you are applying directly to a company, you need to let your recruiter know that. If they're, because if you have replied, if you have, excuse me, applied directly to ABC company, and they want to set you up for with ABC, ABC company. They want to they want to to present you to ABC company. Um, they need to know you've already applied because it looks real bad for them if ABC company has already gotten your resume mm -hmm. and then they come along being like, "I have someone great for you." Because ABC company is going to be like, "Why would I hire a recruiter when I'm getting great people through just on our just through putting a job out into the world?" So. You need to be upfront with your recruiter and let them know so they don't put you up for a position that you have already applied for. So you do need to do them that, that, I mean, it's based professional courtesy, yeah. but you need to be honest with them. Um, yeah. And again, you can list with a, as many different recruiters as you want to, um, and then some. And I would recommend when you are reaching out to recruiters to have your portfolio at least in the works. If it's not 100%, fine, you can continue working on it, but at least have something because they will put together a candidate profile, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll fill out, you know, a bunch of information about yourself and what you've done. And portfolio, though, is a key, key piece of this. So, um, you know, it's going to be very hard, I guess, to stand out among other potential candidates if that piece isn't there. So again, you can have it, you know, even if the URL just exists and you're like, I know I'm going to hustle now and get everything else up after I talk with them or whatever, mm -hmm. that's fine. Or alternatively, if you want to have a conversation, make sure you reach back out to say, here's all the things that have changed. I'm going to go update the information that they have on file. Cause it's very easy to go, you know, a year and so much has happened in a year and not have an up-to-date profile. And so, you know, particularly, you know, certain recruiters might be filling for a tech company. And if you have tech experience now, 
awesome. Then add that you want that in there. But if you haven't updated it and they don't know that, then you might not be, you might still be in the running, but you might not be their top pick. It might make you, you know, just give you that little extra to be like, oh, these two people are great, but this person has an industry experience and this one doesn't. That might be, it could be a, a, a factor. So keep things up to date if you're going to list with all of these companies and just make a note of it and put it on your calendar of like, you know, reach out to whichever ones you've you've reached out to and then you know in a year or even half a year or quarterly if you want depending on if you're newer you might want to update it more frequently if you've been around for a while then maybe once a year might be sufficient uh so just add it to your calendar as part of something you need to do mm-hmm. every once in a while mm-hmm. absolutely yeah and this kind of goes back to the they're not working for you so they're not going to chase you down to get updates to. in your experience <laughs> updates in your portfolio they're not going to um i still get emails from a recruiter in seattle and i have i haven't you know i haven't you lived, lived in, in seattle in five eight years, eight years. Really. yeah something like that yeah <laughs> i'm 14 well, maybe, maybe a little. Yeah, you're you're right. Five, you know my life better than me. Um, I'm just you. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, a long time. Mm-hmm. A lot's happened in five, six, seven years. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, and another thing that to bear in mind, um, especially for like we were saying, how um, recruiters will be their fees are baked in. So if they if the company is paying sixty five dollars an hour. The less the recruiter pays you, the more the recruiter gets to keep, if that makes sense, right? So if the company is paying $65 an hour and the recruiter wants to give you, an recruitment agency wants to give you $40 an hour, the recruiter gets to keep 25, right? And they want to keep more. So sometimes you'll work with recruiters and you'll be like, well, this is my base rate. And they'll say, oh yeah, we can't really, we can't really go higher than X, Y, Z. You can feel free to push that because there is, there's negotiation room in there. They're charging as much as they can, reasonably can. They, they're charging that company as much as they reasonably can. And let's face it, this is just basic economics. They're charging the company as much as they reasonably can, and they're paying you as little as they reasonably can, which means that there's this space in the middle where you can play a little bit. And if a company has said, yes, this is the person that we want the recruiter is extra incentivized to get you in that company's door. Because when the recruiter shows, takes you to a company and the company says, oh, yes, absolutely, sign them up. And the recruiter says, oh, this is, this is what we can pay. And you can say, mm, I can't do it. Then the recruiter is in the position of trying to make you happy so that they can keep the company happy. Because if the recruiter then has to go back to the company and say, yeah, so I know that you wanted that person, but actually we can't get them. That's really bad for them. So in that moment, you do have some opportunity. If the recruiter is like, well, you know, we can we can pay you so it's 45 an hour for this position. And if you say, you know, I thank you so much, but actually my lowest rate is 50 an hour. I don't work for less than 50 an hour, they're going to go, oh, well, it's like car sales. Oh, God, I really don't know. If we're gonna... Often, they will be able to do that. Um, it just, it cuts in on their margin. And of course, they don't want to cut it on their margin. But if that is your, like, sorry, I don't work for less than 50 or 60 or whatever your, your rate is, um, then that's their problem and they have to figure it out. Yes, there may be some instances in which the recruiter says, okay, we can't make this work. In that case, then you can talk about whether there is some 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 room, but the recruiter has a built-in margin. So don't be afraid to say, I know you say the rate for this is 45, but uh, I don't work for less than 50. How can we make that happen? And you might see a lot in, at least in the emails I get, it often says, has a rate, and then it says DOE, or it just says DOE, which is depends on experience. So sometimes you might reply to something and not quite know what what the range even is that you're working with. But if it's something you really want, I think the DOE, I always take that as a nice sign of like, if it's the right, if you're the right person, the company is going to gonna pay your mm-hmm. rate. So um, those are the ones I look out for of like, okay, they're willing to... I have a lot of experience. So yeah, mm-hmm. they're going to, they're going to value that, which yes. is really nice. It means that that's, well, it means that it's flexible, but on the other side yeah. of that coin, 
if you don't yet have a lot of experience and if a recruiter says, well, yeah, the company wants you, but, you know, we have to be this rate because, well, you know, you don't have much experience. Don't take that. <laughs> if it's less than what you work for, you can say, well, I mean, yes, the, the number of years that I've worked in this business is not massive. However, I have a lot of experience in all of the areas that they're looking for. And I have a lot of experience doing this kind of work. And I've packed a lot of experience in these, you know, however many months or years you've been, you've been training with the CCA and learning and practicing and all that kind of thing. Um, don't let a recruiter be like, well, yeah, but you know, you don't have as much experience. So we're going to need to pay you a little bit less. No, 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 no. You tell them what your, tell them what your rate is. This is my rate. Yep, I understand that. Uh, we're going to have to agree to disagree on that in terms of how much my particular experience is worth. But I can tell you that my my base rate is I don't work for less than however much an hour. And, but it, make sure that that is true, that you're like, that you wouldn't actually like really take it for 45 or 48 or whatever. You know, if you if you're willing to move around a little bit, you could say, you know, I was expecting more along the lines of of 50. I'm just saying out of, off the top of my head, 50 an hour. Um, and they said, wow, we can't. And I said, OK, well what, well, what can you do? And make them come back to you and say, wow, well, OK, we can't do it. We can do 4750. And if you're like, all right, you know, actually secretly to you, you're like, OK, I could do that. Then you say, OK, that's less than I normally work for. But in this um, I like this company, so I'm willing to do 4750 or whatever. But it's, it's, we, no is just the beginning of the conversation. So don't, or, or at least that what they say doesn't necessarily have to go or it doesn't head what they say goes. Yes. So what they say doesn't necessarily have to go. Um, especially when it comes to rates, you can negotiate that and don't be afraid to negotiate that. And so if, if you don't hear back from the recruiter and, you know, something you were pursuing doesn't work out, um, definitely reach out to them for feedback and ask, Hey, is there anything, you know, you can tell me that I can do next time to improve my, my packet, if you will, my, you know, they present you to the company and often they'll present you without you there first. They have, here's this person, here's kind of what they've done. Um, and then they might want to choose you to move forward with an interview. But at whatever point in that process, if you've worked with them for any amount of time and you know that you've been presented to the company in some way, shape or fashion, um, ask for that feedback and reach out. And the recruiter might not have any. They might not have asked the company. The company might not have told the recruiter, which stinks. But at the very least, you know, they might have something they can share with you of like, oh, it was actually, you know, between two candidates and this one just, I don't know. This one had, had more, more banner exactly. experience, whatever it is. Exactly. Um, turns out they actually need a lot of this type of work. Mm -hmm. And so this candidate just had a stronger portfolio of it, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Um, so. And what that means is you have an opportunity then. First of all, then you know that it wasn't, it's because they hated me. No, they just <laughs> wanted someone with more banner experience. But what that means is an opportunity. When you look at your portfolio and you're like, oh, yeah, you know what? I don't really have any banner ads in here. Hey, guess what? Time to get some banner ad experience, whether you land clients who need banner ads, whether you do some spec banner ads and use those in your portfolio until you get paid banner ad work and swap those out for your spec. It's just, it's great feedback about how you can even better flesh out your portfolio and make it more appealing to more clients. Yeah. Yes. So recruiters uh, can be terrific and definitely definitely get listed with them and definitely think of them as a tool in your toolkit. Utilize them, work with recruiters. You will probably at one point or another be a little frustrated about your interactions with recruiters. Uh, just kind of know that that's, that's part of how it goes. Um, but don't rely on them because again, the recruiter doesn't work for you. They work for the company. Um, you are the one who works for you. You are the one who you can rely on yourself to get yourself work and to make sure that you have control over the work is coming in. So always, as always, uh, pitching should be your primary source of, of clients. 
um, or at least you should always continue to pitch as you get different sources of clients, but you never want to stop pitching and don't be lulled into, cause I mean, actually I've actually known a lot of freelancers who've done this. who have been like, wow, there's just recruit, recruiters are looking for me. I just get to sit back and they find me work. And that's just, it's not truly how it works. It can look like that a little bit for a moment when you have recruiters looking to work with you. Um, but they're not in it for you. They're in it for the company. So you should be in it for you. Work with recruiters, but never stop pitching and never stop pursuing all of the other opportunities to get work. Okay, so that's what we have for you today. Um, if you are not listed with recruiters, you know what? Today seems like it would be a really good day to at least do a little bit of research and find out what creative recruiters are in your town, in your city, in your state. Uh, and even if you're not ready, you have to lose yourself with those recruiters if your your portfolio site isn't live yet or anything like that. Um, come up with that list so that when you are ready to list yourself recruiters with recruiters, say maybe the day your portfolio site goes live, uh, then you are ready to go ahead and get started and, and put that tool in your copywriting toolkit. Okay, so with that, we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye, everybody. Like what you heard? Hit subscribe so you never miss a video. And if you're ready to take the first step toward becoming a copywriter yourself, sign up for our free video training right here.